Hi guys, this video will talk about how to perform a general slit lamp examination and the different techniques that can be used. First and foremost, probably the most important thing, is ensuring the patient is set up correctly. This means chin on the chin rest and forehead right up against the bar. The outer corner of the eye needs to be aligned with the markings on the slit lamp. This is crucial to ensuring you get a focused image. I will talk about the illumination system, which is your light source, and the viewing system, which is the binoculars you look through, in the video. Basically, examination occurs in order. You start at the front of the eye and then work your way to the posterior pole. We'll talk through anterior to posterior examination and particular techniques that are only used when clinically indicated. Step 1. So examination begins with the lids, lashes and nexa. Generally, a diffuse beam is used. This is a beam that's full height and it's wide, about 3 to 8 millimetres. The illumination system should be 30 degrees off or can also be aligned. For routine examination, generally I prefer magnification between 10 to 16 mag. Diffuse beam allows for an overlook of the whole eye. Examining the lids and lashes together, top then bottom. Common pathology to look for is blepharitis, papillomas, any skin tag or capping of the meibomium glands. Then I'd look at the bulbar conjunctiva and sclera, still using a diffuse beam. Things to look out for this time would be hyperemia, nevus, pterygium, pinguicolae. Complete lid aversion is usually only done on indication. For example, if the patient comes in with a red eye or I'm suspecting papillae or follicles or a patient with giant papillary conjunctivitis, then it's needed. Next, you can call this step three if you like, parallel piped, is used to examine the cornea, iris, pupil and lens. This is a beam that's full height and wide. The illumination system this time is 45 to 50 degrees off. Essentially, start with the cornea and scan across it. Here you're looking for a clear cornea, hopefully, and it's only when I find an issue with the cornea that we'll zoom in. I use cross-section to hone into a specific layer of the cornea. You're basically viewing a slice. Here the beam can be as narrow as possible. Illumination system is not aligned. It will allow you to look for any corneal thinning, as the beam won't be uniform, i.e. the same thickness all across, and can also be used to measure Van Herrick. Say, for example, in the cross-section, you see there may be a defect in the endothelium. That's when you'll use specular reflection. You need full brightness, high mag, and the illumination system as well as the viewing system are not aligned. They're 90 degrees to one another, as shown in the image. The epithelium is out of focus because you're aiming to see the endothelium clearly. This is one of the more difficult techniques to master. When you see the orange skin-like appearance, you know you're at the endothelium. Here we're looking for things like keratic precipitates, endothelial dropout, or enlargement of your endothelial cells. The iris will be the next structure we examine. The surface can be looked at with the parallel pipe technique, but retroillumination tends to be the most useful here because you're using the red reflex to identify any defects in the iris. For example, slit-like defects from pigment dispersion syndrome or peripheral erodotomy used to help control intraocular pressure. Retroillumination is really simple and you can incorporate it into your routine exam. You'll be surprised the amount of information it will give you. The beam is smaller than the pupil. It's about 5 to 7 millimetres wide. And what you need to do is swing your illumination system until you see the red reflex through the pupil. We then need to look at the anterior chamber to make sure that's clear. So no cells or flare and I'm still using the cross-section at this stage. Only when we suspect that the anterior chamber is affected, for example, in uveitis or with retinal detachment where we have, may have tobacco dust in the anterior chamber, will indirect illumination become useful. This is where you need to use a conical beam, so one millimetre by one millimetre. This needs to be bright, and the illumination system will be 30 to 40 degrees off. Essentially, you have a beam of light that's reflecting off the iris and another beam that's reflecting off the cornea. You're using the dark black background of the pupil to see if there's any cells or flare present. Next, we need to examine the lens. We simply do this by moving the lamp forward. The iris and the cornea should now be out of focus and the lens should be clear. Here, the most obvious thing to look out for is any lens opacity, so cataract. And that's pretty much the anterior segment complete. Last, but definitely not least, use your condensing lens. I personally prefer 90D to examine the vitreous and posterior pole. There's your slit lamp examination done. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.